right. It is uh, 20, my time. 20, <laughs> as always say, international. Uh, so it is, uh, I am live, but uh, it is uh, kind of late. So I'm going to do just real quick, um, like a real like half an hour one because I, uh, yeah, I'm not, I, honestly, I don't even know what I'm going to do. Um, like I have an idea, um, you know, it's, I don't really want to continue with my other one because it was kind of, I feel like it was a bad idea. Okay. Like here, let's, let's, uh, okay. So what I was working on before was, um, was, uh, I was, I was thinking about something like last pass, right? Um, so last pass, if you're unfamiliar is a password manager that stores, everything on their servers right so they so you give them you do your password which is hashed i imagine they check your master password right which is hashed and not encrypted right and then what happens is um you you store all your passwords on their um on their server right and then also my headphones are like this because uh, Alicia said that um, my hair looks weird after I uh, after I wear my headphones for a while, so I'm wearing them down here. And it it honestly it fits pretty good. Like it's actually it's actually not bad. Um, it, it works out pretty well. So uh, so anyway, so I was thinking about something like last pass, but instead of like instead of last pass specifically. Um, I would love it if it was more like, uh, well, I wanted to make LastPass, but then I thought, man, LastPass has had a bunch of, a bunch of, um, if you just Google LastPass or Google, geez, if you just search LastPass on Hacker News, um, there, I don't know if this is unique just to them or if like the idea of having a bunch of encrypted passwords on a server from all kinds of different users, millions of users all over, is just too good to pass up. And so I think a lot of people are attacking LastPass all the time. There's a bunch of security. There's why we can't have nice things, security notice, like this is seven years ago, but look, uploading your passwords to its server, right? Holding pass, holding users' passwords hot. Even the LastPass will be stolen, right? So, um, Someone had... Uh, their last pass master password get, got leaked seven months ago. It's like, I think if you, I mean, obviously they should hash that master password and they shouldn't even know what it is. Right. And then the second thing that I would do is encrypt all other passwords, but you have to, you can only encrypt them. You can't hash all the other ones uh, because you need to show them to people. Right. So that's, that's where I think, last pass and stuff like that went wrong so when i made my password manager all your passwords years ago i i was like i'm just gonna do it so it only gets stored on your computer and then i added later i added like csv export so it's kind of ghetto but like if you ever upgrade your computer or move computers you can uh go to file export csv and then it'll uh just and then it'll import i think too I'm pretty sure I've pretty sure I've done this. Or you can also go into applications and get the SQLite database file and just move it to the new computer, right? So you can put it to an external hard drive or something, or you send it to the other computer somehow. Um, oh, you know what I just realized is the music um, is not playing, uh, which is weird because I thought I thought I did that. Hold on, let me do this. Um, okay, it looks good. Um, it looks like it should work right oh it's muted okay let me do this all right so now now it should work right once it comes back on let me see um wow i'm in some kind of like lo-fi situation all right uh oh there it is okay there it is good all right we'll turn it up a little bit okay so um so yeah, I don't really want to make another password manager, even though I would like to have it synced instead of copying over a SQL Live file, but it's worked so far. I feel like Apple hasn't taken it down from the Mac App Store yet, so I'm okay. But I think in the future, I might do something like this, but I, I don't even know if LastPass, as a real company, can't keep their server secure. I, d I don't know how I'm going to keep people's passwords secure, so I don't even want to... I don't even, or my own passwords, right? 
I don't really want to uh, to do that. So I was working on something like that, but I thought, ah, it's probably a bad idea. I was also working on that uh, Twitter CSV ex- follower CSV export thing. I could recreate it in Go, maybe. Uh, that's something I could do. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure. I don't even really want to tweet this stream out because like it's kind of it's going to be a boring one. Um, but I do, I do want to do something where I'm not just like messing with sessions and cookies and stuff. And like, I'm actually like, I'm trying to like, instead of me trying to avoid frameworks, I should just embrace the fact that, uh, there's some libraries out there, I guess. And, uh, I can, I can walk through them probably. Um, but yeah, who knows? I'll probably just copy over my session stuff. Um, uh, but I, I would, uh, I would like to do something. So, um, just with like uh, classless CSS and uh, uh, you know, just like maybe Alpine JS or something, right? If I need JavaScript, which I probably won't, but yeah, I like to do something. So I think uh, I can. I think I was looking at my. Someone reached out to me on Twitter and was like, "Hey, who makes this thing?" And it was me. <laughs> and someone was surprised that it was me because I didn't. I don't really talk about it at all. So um, like, I made this thing, right? I called it ping, but I think, um, I could do a little better. I could just sort of build on this. This is written in Rota, um, but I want to make it in Go. And I think it'd be cool to, to deploy it to Fly.io, uh, because then with Fly.io, I can, um, have it on like multiple servers at the edge or whatever. Right. Uh, and with Go, I feel like it'd be less resource intensive. So I could like run it on like a shared thing or whatever. I don't know. Uh, okay. So, and with all this, uh, also today, uh, what happened was, uh, let's see, hill bomb event. Um, something happened though. Um, some kind of thing. Um, shoot, what happened? Uh, oh, there it is. Ret bleed, right? So it's a, um, new speculative execution attack, right? Um, look, they add overhead of 12 to 28%. So all, I feel like a lot of the processor speedups that we've been getting from all this speculative, um, like branching and stuff from where they try to like de- predict which, uh, which branch to take. Right. So like, that's how processors work is they, to make them faster. They, um, they try to do things in parallel and they try to, uh, predict which instruction is going to be executed next, right? Like which opcode. Uh, so, so all these things were like kind of state of the art when I was going to school for this. Uh, but, uh, we've been slowly rolling it back, right? Like with Heartbleed and Spectre and now this one. Um, so it adds overhead of 12, 28%. Like processors are actually, they're probably getting slower, right? (laughs) Like we thought, we thought they were getting, I mean, they're getting faster overall, but not as fast as Moore's law, I think would have us to believe. So I don't know. It's kind of funny to think about uh, that we are all concerned about all this performance, but the hardware just gets destroyed when it comes to uh, speculation attacks and stuff like that. So yeah, I feel like if you're not compiling for ARM or like some kind of like uh, M1 or M2 or something, like you're really, really shooting yourself in the foot. Like you're really not getting that much performance. Um, so I, I don't really care about performance that much. I care more about like productivity. Um but not to the exclusion of everything else. I, I care more about like, how do I keep my costs down on the server, right? That's what I most care about. So like low memory usage is I'm really into that. So Rust is a good language for that. It's really hard to program, but I think it might be worth it in the end. I'm still learning. Uh, Go is good for that. I feel like Go is like a good middle ground. I mean, there's still a garbage collector, but uh, what are you gonna do? I think Go is good. So yeah, I wanted to do something with Go um, today, and I only have 20 minutes, so I can't really do too much. But yeah, I'd like to. Maybe I will. Um, maybe I'll try one of the Go Lang frameworks to see if I can move real fast. Um, like Go Fiber looks pretty good, and I started to use it, but I didn't really understand the uh, underlying things of Go because um, they had written a bunch of abstractions here, right? This is a lot of abstraction. Like they have their own context that they send around. Um, and they use it to actually return something to the router, which is fine, I think. Um, it's just not really how normal Go works. Um, but it's definitely something. Oh, you know what I could do is I could try to implement 
the router that I saw a while ago, routing um, strategies or something. I forget. There it is. Okay, so um, let's see. I'm not going to do this craziness, but I think just having turning this bit into a regular expression and then running through like I always do is something to something good, right? So like this is how it turns out. You you basically find the um, you basically find the colon and you uh, try to get that out of there. Um, this is even easier because you're literally just like writing a regular expression in the place of the parameter and, uh, and you're, uh, just running through and, uh, just matching it. Right. Which is, it's, I mean, it's interesting. It's definitely interesting. Um, so yeah, then you're just doing must compile, but, but I think there is, you can just convert this to, uh, to a thing. So yeah, I, I, I might just add a little bit on top of this. I might just take this and do this just now. Uh, so maybe I'll change my maybe I'll change my info, right? Uh, well, it is still full stack, I guess. Well, it's not really full stack. I, I, I probably I probably shouldn't say that it's full stack. I'll I'll change I'll change the uh, the stream info for the next twenty minutes. Okay, how do I how do I get back to this? Oh, here we go. Okay. Uh, how do I how do I change this? This is I didn't even tweet this because I'm not prepared at all for this, but I did I did wanted to do something. Um, I I should go on like a rant and actually make a YouTube video out of this, but uh. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of in a ranty mood, but not really. Uh, okay, so um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, Golang um, routing. And we'll do that. Okay. A simple... Oops. Implementing a simple regex router in Go. There we go. Okay. All right, so I've done this a bunch of times in like a bunch of different languages, so I feel like I should be good to go on this. So maybe I'll be okay. I I really don't want to use like a framework because I feel like it's it's completely overkill. I mean, I don't even know what's in here. I have to have to look at all the code in here, and I'm sure there's a ton of it, right? Actually, it's not that bad. Router. Oh, but there's like internal, and like there's all this stuff. Like it it's a lot. And they have their own templates, it looks like. I I don't really know. But I think if you really wanted to get going fast and you didn't care about, um, you didn't necessarily care about, like, depending on someone else for your website, uh, like, depending on this these people, uh, I think that I would go with Fiber, I think, probably at this point. Um, let's see, HTML. Yeah, it's like, I there's just so much. Okay. So I'm gonna, uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this routing thing. I, I like this, and I wanted a better router than than the uh, the built-in router because it doesn't have any URL parameters, which I thought was crazy. You had to use query strings for everything, which honestly, like the new default, right? In Chrome, Chrome hide full URL by default. I think Chrome, I think it hides the full URL right by default. Um, always show full URLs. Yeah. Oh, won't hide a full URL anymore. They took it away. Uh, it won't hide a website's full URL. Okay. So it doesn't actually help with security. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it doesn't. Showing less information, uh, never really helps. Um, most notably, Chrome web address except domain name and was accompanied. Hid all parts except the domain name. Yeah, so actually Safari does this by default. It it hides um it hides the uh tabs always show website titles. Um and then yeah, you have to actually show wait wait. wait. Yeah, not, it does it does though. Let me see. Oh show you have to say show full website address. Oh, that's the smart search, yeah. So you have to actually say it. Otherwise, it'll just um, show you um, just the uh, just the, the domain. So with query string, that is not bad for query strings, but I, I don't know. I don't know. It's not not great either. All right. So um, oh, you know what? I should realize I'm wearing a black shirt and like I'm really like kind of a ghost in here. It's kind of funny. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna get I'm gonna get going on this. Let, let's do this. Uh, let's just say, let's just call my router. Um, you know what? Let's actually start. Let's actually start a whole project because 
I'm against frameworks now, right? I'm not gonna make any more frameworks, so I don't wanna do anything. I don't wanna make a framework. I'm just gonna make a website and I'm gonna like copy over all my stuff and I'll just do that. Uh, so let me see, I'm gonna, I, I saw, uh, so I, I, there's some interesting ideas, expiring to-dos uh, is one which I thought was interesting. If you don't get to it in 30 days, it just falls off your to-do list because it wasn't that important to begin with. Uh, that was kind of interesting. Um, I still would like to make my Twitter TikTok mashup clone thing where you only see one bit of text or image at a time or video or whatever at a time. Uh, actually, you only see one bit of text at a time and then it you like you know you swipe up to like you use the CSS um heck, what is it called? Uh CSS uh let's see here. Uh it's like slide full screen full screen slideshow something. Uh CSS pure CSS. Uh it, it's called something. There's something that lets you do this though. Uh like wait, sw uh swipe swipe slider uh css pure we'll say pure pure css there we go let's see what is it create a slider with pure cycling slideshow i i, I think it's getting tripped up on slider I, I probably shouldn't say slider uh let's see it, there's definitely scroll snap that's what it's called css scroll snap um so you can recreate tiktok uh code pen um, tick, we can just say TikTok, right? Uh, so yeah, like here we go. So here's a scroll stop TikTok example. So here we have something, right? Uh, we can make this a little bigger. Uh, okay. Is it going to actually render the thing? Result? Okay, that's not going to work. Uh, here we go. Okay, so you can, um, wait, what? This isn't even scroll snap. Okay. Let's do this one maybe. Okay, here we go. So yeah, you can like swipe and then it gets to a certain snap position and it goes the rest of the way, right? So there there you go. So we can do that. So yeah, CSS scroll snap to do something like that, but for text only would be cool still, I think. Um, what else would be cool? So expiring to do's, scroll snap. I would also like, yeah, recreate my my uptime monitor. Oh, I saw that. Uh, don't don't buy this domain. I don't think anyone is, but uh, yeah. So I thought, uh, actually, you know what? Maybe I will buy this domain. <laughs> Maybe I'll buy. It. I don't even know. Wait, how am I not signed into uh, Google Domains? Google. What the heck? Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh wow, I don't even have. I don't have any domains on Google. Oh, that's why I wasn't signed in. Because I use Pork Bun. Uh, so I thought, uh, all your uptime would be good, right? Don't buy it. Don't buy it. I'll be so mad. Don't, don't do this. Uh, actually, you know what? Maybe I'll just buy it before, before you can get to it. Let me see. <laughs> before anyone, before anyone watches this. All right, let's go to pork bun. Um, I'm going to get rid of this. So it's not on the thing anymore. Uh, we'll put that on there. Okay. So let me see. Domain management. All right, all your uptime. Actually, you know what? It's probably not a great domain. I probably shouldn't buy this, uh, but whatever. All right, I mean, I haven't used anything all your in like a long time, but uh, whatever, we'll just do it anyway. All right. Uh... Ooh, it's gonna take a while. Apple Pay. All right. Oh, man, I have nine minutes left. Are you serious? I haven't even written a single line of code. So we'll just do this. All your uptime, right? Uh, and we will say all your uptime. Uh, all your uptime. And we will do that. Wow, this is, um, this is actually kind of sad, I think. I don't even know what's going on here. What if I refresh this? Maybe it was broken. What? How can it pay though? I didn't even do like touch ID or anything. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is madness. Uh, wow. Which card did it go to? <laughs> it didn't even, uh, it just didn't even really. Oh, okay. I'm guessing the proud owner of all your uptime now. Cool. 
All right, so that's cool. Uh, yeah, so I also wanted to make something that was like, I was kind of working on it for like, just, it was like Stack Overflow with no comments, no nothing. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, that'd, be, that'd be pretty sweet. Um, but I think for now, I'm just going to do this routing thing in like 10 minutes. Can I do it in 10 minutes? Can I do it in, in, uh, in eight minutes? Let's see. We'll do, uh, you know what? We'll open this up actually. We'll, we'll do this instead. Let's see. This is what we're going to do. Uh, okay. I'm going to actually get into it now. Let's see. So here, uh, what's cool about, uh, NeoVim, the Vimgo is it makes this for you, right? That was pretty cool. So we'll, um, we'll leave this in, I think, um, hello router, right? And we'll just run it real quick. All right, cool. So we will also, we will, um, we're going to make something like, we're just going to do routes, right? And it's going to say route, um, route is a type of route. Yeah, I, I like to do capitals on types just because Ruby, you know, um, but methods, I'm just going to like destroy g goes, uh, no, nah, I don't care. Uh, it's a struct, right? It has a uh, method that's a string. It has a URL that's also a string. And um, it has a handler that is a HTTP handler, right? All right. And I think that's what he did too. Yes. Oh, it actually is a regular expression, right? But I think for mine, I uh, I don't really care that much. But yeah, I might as well store the precompiled regular expression too. So there's a method, a URL, a handler, and uh, oh, it's a handler func, right? There we go. All right. That's fine. Yeah, that that makes more sense. Okay. So it's a method URL regex and handler, right? It's a regular expression and handler. Um, I honestly don't even know how pork bun took my money. Be oh, there it is. Okay, so it did actually it did actually go through. Okay. Wow, that JavaScript was uh, horribly broken on that payment page. Okay, let me close this. There we go. All right. Uh, okay. So, um, okay. All right, I'm getting distracted. Uh, so we have a uh, array of routes, right? And that's how you declare them. Actually, you know what? We can make it a little nicer. Uh, maybe we can do something like this, right? Where we say, um, you know, it's an app, right? And uh, an app returns a type app. And we're like building the app, right? But we can, we can do that later. For right now, we have an array of routes. And our routes look a little like that too, right? So we can say uh, route. We don't have to say new route. We can just say route. Right. Method. It takes a string. Uh, that is a yep. That's a pattern. <clears throat> Method is also a string. Oh, can you? St uh, you can do types like that where you, where you do that. I didn't know you could do that. Handler func. It returns a route. And it returns a route, which is a method. And we will compile the regular expression. Um, must compile, and we will say this, and pattern, and this, and then we will say handler is the handler, and this will be the regex, and this will be the URL, will be the pattern. We'll call it, we'll call it pattern, um, because it's not really a URL. It, it like wants to be a URL, right? Okay, so here we will say must compiles regex mixture. Oh, you can't do that. Oh, wow, that's so sad. Um, okay, so maybe we can just do this, right? Oh, it's the order that they're defined in. Interesting. Oh, that makes it really nice. Wow, this. I mean, this is actually not bad for statically type. It's not horrible. Okay, uh, then we will say. Um, so th this this person says must compile, but our pattern is going to be something like this string, right? It's going to be something. I will I will run this real quick just to uh, make sure that things compiling still. But uh, realistically, um, uh, realistically, uh, I think I should probably focus on the strings first. So here I would say this is a string, 
um, and it is like uh, this. We can say, uh, we'll say, we'll say, um, wait, am I even going to have any parameters in this for my uptime monitor? Let me think about this. The uptime monitor is going to have, um, you're going to say uh, monitors, right? Wait, what's a different word for monitor? Mon a synonym. A synonym monitor, right? Uh, detector recorder. Uh, prefect. A watch. A, tra a, tra a check. Yeah, we'll call it checks. Checks, right? Because uh, you're going to check, right? Or maybe we can call it, um, we can call it, no, we'll call it check. We'll call it a watcher. Tracker. It's still two syllables. We'll call it, we'll call it checks. It's fine. So we have, I think, I think the schema that I had for ping was, um, I had, uh, checks, right? I had like create table and I had checks and then that was like a URL. Uh, and then, um, uh, and then it was like, it wasn't unique. And then I had a user ID and I had create table users. And then, um, oh, this song, it's not bad. Yeah, I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. Let's see, how can I do that? In the, <laughs> in, uh, in this MIDI thing. There we go. Yeah, that's good. That's good stuff. All right. Um, so we'll it has ID, it's an integer, it's not null, it's primary key. Uh, and then I had uh, email, right? Which in this case, it's actually going to be optional, which I'll get to in a second. So I have like a, oh my gosh, 829. Okay, so I have, I, I do want to talk about this. I have an idea in my head. Like, so after I saw this Molvad VPN thing, uh, after I saw this, I, oh my gosh, I got to keep, I got to stop doing this. I keep, uh, I keep doxing myself. All right, so after I saw this, where you generate an account number, right? Um, that's really cool. It's like frictionless. Um, but I think it's not great for like less, even like a tiny bit less technical person that doesn't know about password managers or care. Um, so though, I mean, you could write it down, but then you have to type it back out, which isn't horrible. But I also thought maybe you can get an optional email. So if you type in your email, it'll resend you your account number, but it's still how you get in. So you can get in, by getting an account number that's new, maybe? I might actually hash this. Shoot, yeah, I might I might just hash the account number, right? So account number, um, yeah, it's not bad. Uh, and then, so this one's not null, and this is unique, too. So you get an account number, and then you also can input your email, which is optional, right? And then, so if you forget your account number, I can email you a new account number. Wait, I can email you a new account number? But I can tie it back to your current account. Wait, that's that. That's a security hole, now that I thought about it. Because anyone can just email. Wait, no, 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 because you're in control of your email. So if I email you... And then you click the link, then you could reset your account number to a new account number, and I can just tie it to your current email. But you have to click the link first before I do that. Yeah, that's better. All right, so yeah, email's optional. So just in case you forget your account number, but I don't know, maybe it, it kind of adds something. So yeah, this like, idea of frictionless like um, sign up. So just, just clicking this button, and I, I have an account now. Like I'm already logged in, right? <laughs> like I wasn't logged in before, but now I'm logged in just by clicking that button. That is like, um, that's amazing. Like, I think that's amazing. Um, but yeah, if I forget this, I'm done for, right? But I think, I think it's incredible. It's such a better idea than here, give me something first. And now you can have an account. It's like, no, I'll give you an account. Here you go. Just don't forget this number. <laughs> I think it's so much better. So I thought the combination of account number, and then you can type in your email later if you feel like you'll forget it right? Which I don't want to use it as like a crutch. So I don't know, maybe. Uh, so yeah, just don't forget your account number, I guess. 
Uh, and then, so email just in case, just in case you forget and you happen to type in your email later, then I don't have to email you for anything unless, unless you say it, right? So like you have to actually say, hey, email me this thing. That's kind of nice. So that gets around like um, having to get an email every time to log in. I think it's much better. Um, so I'm into that. It's like, uh, yeah, it's like less friction uh, to, to sign up. And because I mean, the, competi the competition is like the stupid, the new Apple and Google stuff where they like have you, you know, do your bio check on your fingerprint or whatever. It's kind of invasive and like all controlling and I hate it. So it'd be nice as like the rebellion to uh, to try to make something that's just as nice and easy. You just have to uh, write this down somewhere, right? And I think this is easier than a password, honestly. <laughs> like, and I could hash this, so like it can never be stolen from the server. Like, no one can even if they break into my server. Like, here's a bunch of hash stuff. Here you go. That's perfect. Uh, okay, so this I have this here as an integer. So I have ID here, integer not null. Uh, so I have checks. And then um, this is integer references users right user user z, references users uh, ID makes no sense. There we go. That's fine. I, I, either way, it doesn't make any sense. I really have to make singular table names for it to make sense. Okay, and then everything's ID, I guess. Or we can just say we can just do. I was doing this user ID, and then check ID, right? Okay. And then, uh, so I did that. And then I also had, um, I had a ping, right? So, or I had, um, I had, yeah, I had a ping. But I think uh, my problem at first was I was making a ping every time I sent one. <laughs> so I, my database was filling up quite a bit. So instead what I did was uh, I just said, I just kept track of downtime, right? So like down, like uh, I, I said, um, uh, downtime maybe, right? And then um, I had a downtime ID, right? Which was also there, sure, because I do that for everything. And then this is a uh, check ID, right? And then not null. Uh, references. Uh, check, check ID. And then I also had um, I also had like the time that it started at, right? Uh, not null, right? Uh, default Unix epoch. So I only insert into downtime. Uh, when when it is down, and then um. And then I can I can just check the uh this created at, and then actually you know what I actually did make this ping, right? Maybe we can see downtime, ping, right? G. And then so this so the pings only get created when there is downtime. So here we can say uh, down at right. We can say down at, and then here we can say it's an integer also, and then up at is an integer. So there's only um. Wait 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 no no this is fine. So I only create a ping when it goes down or when it comes up right. So then I can determine downtime like from those from those two events, right? So like if, so if, if something went down, right? Uh, I, I could just say um, ping, and I could say like created at would be like one, two, three, four, five. So it went down at one, two, three, it went down at one, two, three, right? And then I create another one, right? Insert, insert, right? And then I create another one, right? Uh, Cause it went back up at three, two, one. And I think I actually had, um, a down, which is a Boolean, um, not null, uh, default zero, right? And so I had a Boolean that was a, that was down, right? And so this one would say down is true, right? Down would be one here, and then down would be zero. So so this site, uh, it starts out right. So like I sent the, I send the first ping, and uh, at zero, and like it they usually start out as up, right? Because like you enter your URL as up, right? And then, um, then they they go down, right? So down to zero. So then it goes down at zero, and then it comes back up at at one two or like one three zero, right? So like seven ticks later, it comes back up, right? And then I just record that. So I'm sending. I was send. I'm. I think ping sends five minute 
right? Is that what it does? Ping does, yeah, five minute pings. So that's not great. I mean, it's only 12 times an hour, right? Um, but it's free. So what are you going to do? So for this one, I can probably send more, I think. Um, and it'd be cooler because I have three Fly.io regions, right? So I, I could set it like closer or like it simulates three different areas, uh, not just from one server. Uh, so like, cause sometimes I'll, I'll get false pings on my thing. So I should, I should probably update ping actually and, uh, change it so that it, uh, it, um, when it fails, oh my gosh, here, I have to show you this. I actually, uh, I saw something about, um, oh my gosh, my Apple watch. Uh, I actually, I saw something about this exact thing that I'm about to show you, right? This is, uh, not open source, but oh well, it's fine. Uh, let me see what's going on here. Nothing, nothing's going on. Nothing's going on. Uh, so let me see GitHub. Um, I think I just call it ping. So this is, this is, uh, oh, it's, it's a private repo, but oh well. So you're watching the stream, so you get to see this. So I, this is a uh, Rota, right? I was my first, um, I think it was my first like real Rota app. Um, and it's not bad. So here's the ping thing, right? So, um, well, it's just the job. I actually have to go to jobs. Uh, so here's the ping job, right? So like there's two things that it does. It pings each website. So this was a, this was a pain in the butt to over time. I did this, right? So at first I just, I, I was like, oh, I'll just make the, um, the thing and I'll just send it. And I didn't have any of this stuff, right? I had none of this. Uh, I had this obviously, but, um, I had none of this, right? I didn't have any of this. I didn't have this. I had that, but I didn't have socket errors, connection refused, open timeout, read timeout. I didn't have any of that stuff, right? And so it was constantly timing out. Like my server would try to hit someone else's URL and it was slow. And then it would just constantly time out, right? Um, so that, that sucks. And then um, uh, it'll send the email, right? If uh, if the um, if the thing is down, right? And then I also was always making new pings every single every five minutes. So I'd make however many users the thing has. I have no idea. I haven't checked it. But however many it had, it would like create that many, right? So I think that was probably why it was timing out. It wasn't even the people's websites. Um, so then I yeah I just take now minus the last ping. Um, if it's not up, right? So if if it if it changes, I only store changes. Um, so I could recreate this in, in go pretty easily, I feel like, but, uh, but yeah, it'd be cool to do this, um, with go because it would use a lot less resources and, uh, stuff. So that'd be good. And I can, uh, handle some of this stuff better. Um, because this was not obvious to me, even as like a pretty seasoned Ruby developer, like it wasn't super obvious that I would run into all these problems. Um, and I saw something, I read something on this, which I have to think about. Uh, so I read something on this. And like how, you know, Rust can solve your problems, can solve all your problems or whatever, but whatever, it doesn't matter. All right, so uh, let's see. What, what were we doing? We were doing the, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do all this. I'm just gonna leave this. Actually, I'm not gonna leave this. It's fine. I have it in my head. All right, so, oh my gosh, I'm 10 minutes over. Uh, okay, so let me at least uh, try to convert a string like this into this bit here, right? So if I have a string that looks like this, um, if I have a string that looks like this and I want to, I actually want to convert my string into this string, right? I want it to look like this. Uh, I want this ID to look like this, right? Uh, I will say though that, uh, we could do a little better, I guess, like than, than Ruby, uh, stuff. So like, cause you could tell it like, uh, some of the, some of the other routing, like, uh, I think enclosure, there's a router, um, with a really unfortunate name. Um, <laughs> I don't, I think it's, uh, like a different language maybe. I don't know, but in English it, it, it sounds weird. I don't want to say it. Uh, so let me see. So this, um, you do something like the name pong, but you can also give it, um, route data validation. So I think you can do more than just this so you can say what it is right um yeah i think you could say like this is an integer or something right 
slash free routing. Yeah, exactly. Um, so you don't actually need slashes, which is cool. Uh, and th I think this uh, colon or this curly brace syntax. Yeah, so here you go. So user by ID, right? Um, but I think you can coerce, right? Oh, here we go. Yeah, you can coerce. Oh my gosh. You have to explain it. Okay, so router one, two, three. So, uh, oh my gosh, I don't even understand what's happening. So I, oh geez, oh, that's a lot of code. Um, wow. All right. So yeah, it says uh, user ID is an int, right? So y you can just make something that looks like this. If you wanted to convert, if you wanted to do int like numbers and, and strings, like this one has a regular expression that is this. Oh, you know what? I was just thinking, forget this. Forget. <laughs> I can literally just use this code as it is. You know what I could do instead? It's just, oh man, this is a much simpler idea. So I can make a route like this, right? Currently, I can actually do this. Get, right? And then, uh, actually, you know what? I can do something like this instead. I can just say um, get, right? We can say uh, var get. Actually, uh, we can do const, right? Can we do, is const a thing? Yeah, const get is uh, get, right? Um, like that. And we can say const post, right? But I think HTTP actually has it, right? Get, method get, right? Um, yeah, it's already, okay, so <laughs> I don't even need to do that. So for this, I would say, uh, so I would say home here, and then I would say uh, func home w response writer, which I really need to get the snippets going here. And then I'd say r HTTP uh, request, right? And so for this, uh, I can make a route that takes, yeah, pattern. But also uh, for my string pattern, so instead of doing what I was going to do, right, which I'm just going to cut off like a bunch of stuff because it's already 8.44. So time constraints are beautiful, okay? You got you to gotta use time constraints. Um, all right, so instead of this, like ugliness, or like this one, right? Right. Uh, so I was I was gonna have a thing that converts a string at run uh, at startup right to convert a string that looks like this right um, or like watches right or watchers or something right or what yeah watches or we can just say ping we'll make a new ping right even though that's not even a thing that would happen so let's say I wanted to update uh... <laughs> I can't I can't even do... let's say I want to delete I want to delete a ping right. So we'll do, uh, it's a post, right? So ping, or we'll say, yeah, we'll do, actually, this is a thing. Uh, a checks, right? It was checks. So if I had a check on a, on a website, right? And I wanted to delete it. So I could, I could make it look like this, right? Um, and I could convert this at runtime to, uh, to this, right? I could convert this uh, at startup to this, right? Um, you know this this other one here right and I could I could write some code right now to do that right and I've done that before and now I just thought like why would I do this like this is this is dumb instead what I should do is just say um, uh, uh, we could say uh, string part right we could say uh, const um, string part string part is um, this, <laughs> and then, uh, we could do this and then we can say, um, integer part, right? Is this, and then we could have a bunch, right? So instead of, um, trying to make it like look really nice and stuff just for the sake of time, I could, uh, I could do something instead that's like this. I could, instead of doing this code and not even writing that, I can just do my routes like this instead. Route, HTTP method post, um, and then I could say um, checks. Uh, we can say int part, right? Because it's an integer in the database. And then um, we could just say uh, delete, right? And that's it, D delete check, right? And there it is, right? 
uh, we'll just copy this and just do delete check here. I love how simple Go is though. Like I know it's like dumb and simple, but I, I love it. It's just so straightforward. And then now I'm already writing the, uh, I'm already writing the response. I'm already in the thing. I, there's no framework required. So yeah, uh, this is much better. I mean, and it, it's not horrible really. Like it's actually pretty readable and I didn't have to write any extra code. Um, that's, I'm into that. I, I could even, if I really wanted to keep it all a string, I could, but like, what's the point really, you know? What's the point? And this happens, uh, I mean, this still happens at, at startup, right? It, it builds the string at startup, but, uh, but that's fine. You know what? Cause I was going to do even more work at startup. That's yeah, not bad. So let's see if I can actually, uh, let's see if I can get this thing right run here because I, uh, well, I, I'll do it 12 more minutes. All right. I'll just, co I'll copy this because this, this will work. I'll write it out though. We can go through it. Uh, let me see. So this um, thing, right? We'll just say a uh, router, right? And it takes a, wait, what the heck is serve? Um, what are we doing? Why is this context here? Oh, is that for the parameters? That's fine. Uh, okay, so this is called serve. And then it, what does it do here? Oh, it's actually like a middleware or something, right? That's fine. Uh, okay. All right. Response writer. Uh, response request, right? Request. There we go. Uh, okay. I don't know what allow is here, but we'll get to it, I guess, in a second. So for each route in the... Then I don't have to actually store the pattern necessarily, but I will. Um, I'll store it, but it's not super important. So maybe I won't store it. Um, we'll just store the regular expression. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, so we'll say range routes. Um, you know what? I'll, um, it's the only thing on my screen that's not dark mode, so I will uh, I will start up Brave instead, and we'll do that. We'll close that. There we go. Much better. Okay, uh, where was I? Here we go. Route range routes. Um, let's see. So it matches um, route regex uh, find string sub match. Your old path. Wow, I'm learning a lot right here. Um, okay. So then it's le length match is greater than zero. The method does not equal route.method. Allow equals append allow. Oh, right, they're just checking for the method. I mean, this is one way to do it, right? So like if len matches, if allow. So allow is a an array of strings if it's greater than zero. Oh, they're actually going through the routes, right? And then they're saying if the matches, if there's a substring match, then, and then you check the method and then you append allow and the method to allow? Continue? Okay, wow, I really have to go through this. <laughs> this is um, not really what I would do. Route handler with context, return. So if there's any match, you, if the method does not equal the method, then you append allow and you continue. Wouldn't you just check the method first though? Usually what I do is I even don't even store a uh, array of routes. I actually store a hash of route, like a map of routes. And then I only have to check the map on the, on the method, right? 
And this one actually puts the matches in the context with the C with the context key. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Route handler, and then set allow. Oh, I see. They're actually. Oh, they're going to return an error, 405 method not allowed. That's why they keep track of the allowed, right? That's one way to do it. That's a super imperative way. My goodness. Like, <laughs> I, <laughs> um, that's crazy. Like, because how many allow? Oh, I see. Because you can do get post put and stuff. So my router is pretty stupid. Like, I wouldn't do that. I would just... um this is i you know what i would even i would even go so far as to say store the i would actually yeah i would say uh well oh i see because you don't want to do too much crazy stuff right that's fine okay that's fine so the first thing i would say is uh i would check to see if uh before i even did that i would check to see if the route if the url right matches um Oh, I see what they're saying. It's going to match the URL, but then it's going to it's going to get the the method, right? But and then it says continue in the thing in the loop, I think, <laughs> which is <laughs> I don't know what this song is. It's horrible. Uh so what is it's like the same song all right let me let me check these songs real quick uh all right that's fine i'll just leave it okay um i i i don't think i would want to do this i don't know if it's worth keeping track of the allows um if the method does not equal the route method right because how you can't send multiple methods at once, though. So there's only ever going to be one method. Continue in the for loop. I mean, it's not going to match multiple routes, right? Oh, if you have the same route, that's get and post. So if I had this, right, method post. Oh, I see it. It, it is going to match multiple routes. And then you want to re report back what methods are allowed i mean to me i forget that i mean that's a lot i'm just gonna say uh i wouldn't say four or five method not allowed i just say not found right but i guess it is found technically yeah i don't usually get this granular shoot man these go programmers are teaching me a thing or two that's fine i guess we can do that um i wonder what a better way to do this is though find substring match um okay we, yeah we can do that if if there's a match, right, greater than zero, right? If r dot method is not equal to route dot method, um, allow. Is that what I called it? Yeah. And we want to keep track of the allows, right? Um, yeah, this is something I've never seen it done like this before. This is super imperative. Like it's really imperative thinking. Uh, okay. <laughs> Um, I would probably say, cause now you have to loop through all the routes again, but I guess go as fast. So maybe it's fine. All right. That's fine. I don't want to overthink it. Allow route dot method. I mean, we could say we could ahead of time. It would actually be better if you had a data structure that looked more like this. Where it had this. And then it had a... Um, HTTP method get. And then it uh, went to home, right? And then it uh, method post, right? Uh, and then it uh, went to uh, something home post or something. This would be much better because then you wouldn't have to do any of this work in the code. Um, whatever. 
This is how it, I guess this is how it is in Go Land. I mean, you know, whatever. That's that's how it goes. I guess it's super imperative. All right, so let's see. Continue. You know what's funny is uh, with this method, you can just come straight out of school and like write something like this because you've been writing a bunch of stupid uh, lead code stuff, right, to get the interview. So we'll just keep we'll just keep it with a lead code. You know. Uh, let's see here. Uh, params. Matches. One. Route handler W R with context um, CTX man go is uh the idiomatic go is like something else it's uh it's pretty foreign to me um, and then here I would say um, if continue oh I'm outside of the thing oops. Okay, and then I'm in the for loop here, and I would say if len allow is greater than zero, right? Um, header set allow strings joint. Man, I love this. Uh, I love this tooling though. It's amazing. Is that what you do with the space? HTTP error. 405 method not allowed. Here we'll do that. Um, status method not allowed. Okay. Uh, return. Otherwise not found. WR. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's something. Um, <laughs> that's that's definitely something. <laughs> it's uh, that is something. All right, so let me see. Path parameters, right? So blah, blah, blah. Adding the matches slice to the request context. The handlers can pick them up from there. Get field helper type that's used inside the handlers. R field context, CTX key um, to the request context so the handlers can pick them up. So it's just an empty struct that they make. And then that's the value is the struct. It's not like a string, right? Why don't you just make it a? Why don't you just make it a? Um, I mean, it's per request, right? So I don't understand that. Return fields index get fields. Yeah, I see. There's a little helper. Get fields. So we'll say params. And this is not CTX key. This is uh, params. I wonder what's the point of using the struct though. It matches slice to the request context. Custom context key type as well as a get field that's used inside the handlers. It's interesting. It's really weird. I wonder. I wonder why. Yeah. So then you coerce it with a dot to uh, to the uh, uh, TX params, and then you can get them by order. Right, because they don't. Have, there's no name, <laughs> which is kind of nice, I guess. You don't have to come up with a name. Uh, so yeah, you could do that, right? That's one way to get around the naming thing. And then, um, yeah, that's how it works, huh? All right. I wonder if it compiles. Let's see. Uh, we'll just run it. We won't compile. Who cares? I don't want to make a. Okay. So let's see. Uh, let me actually make a thing. Um, w write, uh, write takes a byte array. We could do, um, is it IO? Uh, writer or something? IO writer, is that what we do? String writer? Write string maybe, yeah. W write string to um, writer, and we will say delete check is here, right? And then here we'll do the same thing, and we'll say write string um, W, and we will say home is here, right? Home. Okay, so then we will say serve. Uh, we'll make a new HTTP handler, listen and serve. 
Print LN. Uh, is it, is it freaking stupid? <laughs> there we go. Let's see here. Server is listening on port, whatever, right? Listen and serve is localhost 9001. And we will say nil. And we will just routes, uh, we will just add the routes um, to the listener, to the uh, server uh, for x uh, range routes. Is that how we do, is that how we do it? <laughs> I already forgot how to do it. Yeah, that's how you do it. Routes, uh, and then here we can say it's a route. Say R, and then we could say um, HTTP handle, right? And that's um, uh, oh, you know what? We're not gonna do that. We're actually going to say serve with a mux, I think probably. Mux, mux, um, serve mux, new serve mux. Okay. And then we can say um, mux dot handle. Uh, actually, how do they do that? I don't even know how to do this. Okay, cool. All right, yep. I mean, where do you put serve though? Oh, really? That's all it takes? I've been doing it wrong. Oh, oh, really? Format does it? I thought you had to use the IO write string. Format um, f print. Oh, oh, I can just do that. W, W check, right? We don't have to do, uh, you don't. Oh, because we wanted to do uh, percent F, right? And we could say uh, percent S, or we can say percent um, D, I guess, right? Uh, we could say, uh, get the, con um, what was it called? Params, is that what I called it? R zero. And then this one's gonna be just home. There's actually, this one could just be V, I think, probably. There we go. Okay, so that should be an integer, I'm guessing. Um, but it doesn't seem like it would be, but maybe it would be. I have no idea. Uh, slug ID. Oh, there is a, he does do the conversion. Oh, well, I don't understand the point of that then. We can just say part, right? Um, instead of doing that, because it's going to be between anyway, doesn't matter. All right, so let's see, percent V is fine. Um, that's fine, okay. And then the way that it works though, serve as like a middleware or something like I don't even understand that what does he do here router oh you actually just pass the router routers OS args Oh, interesting. Retable is here. Oh, it's a handle. Oh, it's a handler func. Okay. We can say HTTP handler func is uh, a router, right? Is uh, serve here, right? And then what? What is it? Value of type. What is it saying here? What? What are we saying? Is not used. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, let's see here. Handler. We can say handler, I guess. And then here we can just say handler. And maybe it'll work. I have no idea. Let's try it. All right, so it says something, right? 
curl, local host, 9001, home. Uh, what did I call it? Checks, right? Is it post? X post. Uh, one, two, three. Delete. Okay, so that actually does work, right? And if I type in XYZ, it's not found. Interesting. I guess, yeah, constraining it makes sense. But I, um, it, it would be nice to actually do the, because uh, it's just going to do an array of strings, right? Um, and then it looks it up, right? I wonder if there's any, like, information we could get out of this to say whether or not it's a number, right? Because uh, we have, we know that we're using int part here, uh, but the string doesn't care, I guess, right? Yeah, it would be nice to do that. So yeah, I'd also like to see if I do curl x post on this, it should return 405 method not allowed, right? And then it'll say, uh, it'll say um, 405 allow get, right? So if I, if I actually did more, like if I did like a, a post, right? Or if I did like a, a put, right? It should, if I run this again, it should say um, put is good. But if I do uh, post, it should, uh, it's, it's getting put in. Yeah. Well, it actually does work. Wow. Um, yeah, I definitely got school today on, uh, instead of just making a data structure, I guess I think in data structures and not, not code. Uh, but Go program was definitely thinking code first. All right, 909, that's it for the stream. Uh, it was a boring one, sorry, uh, but sometimes that's how it is. So uh, this is actually, this router works pretty well. Um, I kind of like this uh, instead of, uh, so I just, uh, I would have a mux probably, right? If I was gonna do my middleware stuff, I would say, um, main, oh my gosh, are you serious? Projects, uh, super secret store, main.go. So I'd probably, if I was going to have mux, I'd probably do something like this, right? And then instead of my, uh, I would just add this on to my, I would have a mux that is HTTP new serve mux. Hellfire Squid, what's up? Oh, that's so funny. I was just, I was just leaving, but, uh, but, uh, you know what? Yeah, I'm still gonna leave. <laughs> but yeah, what, what's going on? Nothing's going on, I guess. Um, oh, you know what? Hellfire Squid. Uh, what? You know what? I was gonna ask. Um, are you working on anything interesting? I feel like I need some, some something interesting in my life. Uh, so, so tell me what you're working on. That's cool, please. Uh, before I go, I guess. Um, what else was I gonna do? Oh yeah, I was gonna do a mux. Um, I started working on a game engine. Oh, nice. What language? Uh, what am I gonna do with this? Handler. Uh, C sharp, the king of game engine or of, of game engine languages. C sharp is great. Like, I mean, uh, at least for game engines, right? I feel like there's, um, quite a few, right? So it's not like you're in a uh, bad company with C sharp. All right. So now I would just, I would just give this, what is, what is the mux? Is the mux a handler? Um, handler. And I would say mux dot handler func, right? Is uh, serve instead of this. Um, can I do that? Uh, I could just maybe call routes. No, I could call it um, handlers. Well, often they're written in C or C++, and the scripting language is C-sharp. 
Um, oh, is that the case? Yeah, I guess you're right. I yeah, I guess you're right. Like the script language is she like uh, what does Unity do? Unity um, C sharp. I think I think you're right. Maybe I was wrong about that. Um, what is C sharp for Unity? Yeah, it is the scripting language, I think. Um, just kind of like any language. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So why C sharp then? Uh, instead of uh, instead of C or C plus plus, I guess. Well, besides the uh, better memory management, you know, you run C sharp in mono. Yeah, that is correct. That is correct. Not the .NET framework, right? Uh, handler func undefined has no field or method handler func. Handle func? Oh, I guess it doesn't. Yeah, I wonder how I can wrap this. What does app actually do? Most familiar with it? Oh, okay. Was also learning a bunch of TypeScript at work today. TypeScript? I feel like TypeScript... <laughs> Uh, I feel like TypeScript and C Sharp are the same, are the same language, right? Like, it's I, I, they're almost exactly identical except for runtimes, right? Like, I feel like syntactically they're very close. I did do like a bunch of, uh, I did do a bunch of C Sharp, like years and years ago, um, but it was web stuff, not game engine stuff. But yeah. Do you have a, wait, 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 could you make a game engine in TypeScript? That is the question, right? I wonder, I wonder about the performance. TypeScript is a hybrid of JavaScript and C Sharp. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely something. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, game engine is C Sharp. How far did you get? Do you have, oh, is there, is there a GitHub that I can look at? Not that I know anything about game engines. Uh, let me see. It takes adapters and a handler. That's what I did, though. Turns to handler funk. I wonder how I can reuse this somehow. Handler func returns the handler. What does it return? Ordinary function, if f is a function. Is a handler that calls. So it is just a function. Huh, interesting. I wonder if I could just do that instead. Uh, I'm only doing 2D, and so far I've got it rendering images. No, not on GitHub yet. Dang, that's pretty cool, though, rendering images. That's pretty sweet. How does that even work, though? Like, uh, I don't think I've ever done, like, an image renderer. Is it, like, rows and columns and pixels, or what? Is that how I imagine it? That's how that's how I'm thinking about it? <laughs> Dang, that'd be, that's a pretty cool project. <laughs> Better than my web stuff, anyway. Uh, let's see, this serve maybe here, and then maybe I could just say handler dot handle. There's no way. I can type in handler here though, HTTP. Okay, let me bring an app here. And middleware. And logger. 
Uh, using OpenTK, which is a .NET library for OpenGL, so writing shaders. Oh. Yeah, it's funny. I've, like, heard all these things, but I've never um, actually implemented any of them. Like shaders, for example. Um, I think my only game programming was... I've only, like, written a few games, but I've never done, like, engine stuff. It's only, like, a dozen lines of shader code to render 2D images. Oh, that's not that bad. I guess, um, open TK. Uh, okay, open TK. Open toolkit. Fast, portable, low level C sharp bindings for open GL, blah, 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 blah. Oh, man, no metal. Or maybe this does do metal. I have no idea if it's cross platform or not. Oh. Uh, learn? Getting started. Table of contents. Uh, let's see if we can go to shaders. Oh, there it is. Hello, triangle. Oh, I see. Interesting. Most of the rest of the code is in C sharp. Sections of the blue background are programmable, and the ones with the gray background can be lightly customized using functions. Is there an okay? Wait a minute. Is there an equivalent to game engine and web framework? Is that the same thing? Because you want to make the game, but you want the engine to be like so it could be like ergonomic for the programming, you know. Um, and just like with a web framework, you want it to be like kind of nice and like you don't want to have to do everything. So the C sharp sets where the vertices are. Sort of, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I knew it. I knew it. Okay, let me see this. Um, yeah, I don't have that stuff. <laughs> I don't think this is going to work. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not going to work. Let me just clear this. Curl. Local, that was 9001. Oh, it does work. What the heck? So this just takes a handler. Wow, I, I didn't realize that. Oh, okay, so that is a handler, right? It's just a function. Oh, that's hilarious. Okay. So now I can use my router, right? Instead of uh, instead of writing out routes directly, right? Yeah. Type route. I say that. Uh, a game bin is a library or a framework. Oh, interesting. Okay. Dang. Um, yeah, I wonder. That'd be a cool project. Look, if you finish your game engine or even get it to a point where it can make a game, I'll make a game. I'll make a, I'll make Snake. <laughs> can I make Snake? <laughs> it's 2D, right? Or I can make, uh, I can make, I can make Pong. I actually did make Pong before, but it's been like years and years. Um, also, if I could write C Sharp um, in on Mac, I will, I will do that too. All right, so this is actually working. This is pretty sweet. I like this. Um, I do, I have my own router, which I copied off the internet, which it works pretty well. And I don't know if I want to like change it really. I don't even know what this returns. Maybe I should try that. Basics are you have a vertex shader that takes in vertices and texture coordinates and tells the fragment shader where the triangles are and converts the triangles into pixels on the screen. Interesting. Okay, so it's like a the shader is like an abstraction um, over the pixels, right? So you're not like you're not just putting pixels on the screen, you're actually just the open TK will like convert your points your vertex points to like um stuff and then you could like map 
graphics onto that? Is that what happens? Rasterization, fragment shader, test and blending. Shaders get compiled onto the GPU instead of the CPU. Interesting. Grouping vertices into triangles. Optional stage. Convert into fragments. The result of the fragment shader is integrated with the rest of the scene. Huh, interesting. Yeah, dang, that's pretty cool. That sounds like a really fun project. Holy crap. Maybe I should uh, take a break from uh, web stuff and just, you know, go crazy. Wait, can we not do this in here? Is that not what I'm doing? Um, zero through nine uh, plus. Is that what it was? Uh, in part. Yeah, let me just do that. In part. Uh, okay, Redx must compile. So shaders have to be fully parallelizable. Right. Uh, I know that uh, GPUs have like barrel processors. I don't know if they still do that. Um, so I know that uh, is a CPU that switches between threads of execution every cycle. The CPU design technique is uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, so it's like multi massively multi uh, parallel processing, right? Um, yeah. The compiler handles the actual threads or GPU equivalent. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think barrel processor might be uh, too too low level. <laughs> what I'm thinking, I don't even know if they do that anymore. Uh, I think it's like an old thing that doesn't even happen anymore. Uh, oh, super threading. Is it a, maybe it's a vector processor? Uh, maybe not. Oh, GPU. Here it is. Array of shader pipelines that may be driven by compute kernels. It can be considered vector processors. Oh, okay. There it is. So it's like a, it's like the successor to a barrel processor. It's a vector processor. Yeah, GPUs have hundreds or thousands of low power cores. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty crazy. Um, I feel like GPUs. I feel like GPUs. Uh, like there's a open open. Um, there's a open CL too, right? Which is like a. Uh, oh my gosh! What the heck? Didn't I allow them? Okay, whatever. Um. Yeah, it's like uh, so you can do like generic, more generic programming, on um, on GPUs, right? Oh my gosh. Yeah, just low level parallel programming. So this is like for um, stuff that's not games, but yeah, I knew about that. I have so much random stuff that I know about that like, why do I know this? We're in OpenCL, yeah. Deployment flexibility. Wow, look at that thing. Right? You never see that kind of stuff. HLSL. HLSL. Oh, that's like a shader thing too, right? Is that a, is that NVIDIA's thing? C-like high-level shader language. Oh, DirectX. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, within Unity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is a regex. And then I want to say re... Uh, and we will say what happens when there is one and then uh, what happens when there's not one, right? Like that. And then um, find some string sub match. Match and then no match. What does it return? An array of strings? Okay, so we can say matches. Uh, matches do. <laughs> And then we could just say uh, print f, um, and we could say percent v matches. I'd like to actually see this. Okay, so it that's why they skip because it matches the whole thing. All right, that makes sense. That makes sense. So that's why this is here. 
It wasn't very efficient, so a bunch of the performance gain was eaten by the processor saying data to the GPU, but it's still faster. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds like a real problem. Uh, hey, uh, do you, you know what? I got to go because it's getting late for me. Um, but if you are making progress on your game engine, wait, do you stream? Because I'd, I'd like to watch that. Let's see. Let's go over here. How do I go to this? How do I go here? What is it? Is it this? Is it that? Okay, why is it a pop out though? How do I get to your profile? Oh, there we go. Okay. You should. Okay, is this thing gonna do what I want it to? There we go. Uh, okay, I gave you a follow. So if you do stream, I'll watch your stream. On the on the uh, if you do stream in the future, I'll uh, I'll watch your game your game engine stream. Wait wait wait, do I have to hit this bell too? Oh, I already have notifications on. Okay, so if I'm there and you're there and we can watch, don't know how I have 24 followers. <laughs> oh yeah, now you do because I'm 24. I'm number 24, right? Look, I don't know how I have any followers at all. I don't really understand. I I do really boring stuff. Um, but there it is. I, I have no idea. All right, cool. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to, I'm going to get out of here. Uh, thanks. Hey, thanks for watching. Thanks for chatting about your game engine. Um, I'm definitely super interested to see it. Uh, even if it's just on GitHub, like I'd, I'd love to see it. Um, so yeah. All right. So yep. Oh my gosh. I hit the wrong.